I'm Emily and welcome to the Peppernix Knitting Podcast. I hope you're doing really well. Thank you for joining me for episode six and a warm welcome if you have joined since watching my Everything I Knit in 2023 video. I'm really glad that so many of you seem to enjoy that. It was really fun to film and thank you for coming back to watch a regular podcast episode. I've been away for a couple of weeks, so I've been really looking forward to sharing everything I've been working on since I was away. I have also a few really fun acquisitions to share at the end with some loose plans attached to them. So I'm really looking forward to sharing those and getting started on some swatches. Before I jump into the knitting, I have an exciting life update to share. And that is whilst we were away, we got engaged. It was a really nice surprise and it honestly couldn't have been a better day. Here is a little close-up in case you're really nosy like I am. Okay, so now that's out of the way, I'm really excited to jump into all the knitting content. So my first finished object are my Saski socks and these are a pattern by The Petite Knitter. I think in the previous episode I was up to about here and the colour work on the leg and I didn't realise at that point I was going to have to frog and start again. So I kept knitting, I put in my afterthought scrap yarn and started doing some of the foot and then I realized it looked quite tight. The floats were not super tight, the color work looked fairly even but I think my gauge was just too tight doing the color work. So I did take out my scrap yarn and have the opening ready for the heel and it was way too tight. I couldn't really get it over my foot comfortably and I was really worried the floats inside were going to snap so I just decided to frog everything and start again on a bigger needle. So I recommend needle size is 2.25 millimeter needles and I never gauge swatch for socks. I figure that they're small enough, they act as a gauge swatch in themselves and I don't mind having to restart socks and especially these because they were so much fun to knit. I really enjoyed doing the color work all over again to be honest. So I went up to a 2.25 millimeter needle. I think I did the ribbing in 2.5, all of the color work and then I went down to a 2.5 too fine again to do the toe. In hindsight, I probably should have done 2.25 for the heel as well, just to make it a little bit of a tighter gauge and a little bit more hard wearing. I also didn't do all of the decreases recommended in the pattern for the heel because my gauge was looser and the heel was getting long enough as it was. So I just kitchened the ends together when I was ready to stop. Because it is an afterthought heel, I figure that if they're ever does become a hole or anything in it then I can just rip it out and redo just the heel that shouldn't be too hard to do. I have been getting quite a lot of wear out of these and so far I'm really pleased with how the yarn's wearing. There's not really much pilling considering how much wear I've been getting out of them and there's no discoloration or anything on them. It definitely helps having this darker colour yarn as the main colour. I'm really glad that I decided to do the pair like this. I was debating having the second sock as the lighter colour in the main colour, but yeah, I'm really glad that I decided to keep them the same. Here is a close-up of the colour work on the leg. These cute little moons, then there's rabbits. I think these are clouds and then some other colour work motifs at the bottom. It was really fun. I'm really enjoying practicing doing more colour work and I think socks are a really fun way to experiment with colour work and practice getting really good tension. I also knit these in a new to me yarn. They're made in Cascade Heritage sock yarn and I really enjoyed using it. It's really soft but it doesn't feel like it's pilling too much so I would definitely use it again and I think it's really good for colour work. You can see quite clearly the definition in the colour work. Some of the motifs do look a little bit funny, I think just my floats and my tension, but I'm enjoying practicing my colour work and I think I'm definitely getting a lot better. You can probably tell they're quite stretched out already, they don't fit so nicely on the sock blockers. I haven't washed these since I've been back and I've been wearing them quite a bit whilst I was away, so I think if I just give them another wash and they should shrink back into their normal size. They still fit okay, they're a little bit loose now, but uh, after I locked them the first time, they fit me really well. I also really like how the toe decreases and also the heel decreases are done in this pattern. There's no knit stitches in between the decreases, so you have a much thinner band of 
decreases on the toe. I hadn't seen that or knit that before, so it was really fun to try something different. I don't find it uncomfortable when I'm wearing it, so I'm not sure if that will affect the wear of them, being that there's not as much fabric in between the decreases. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how that goes and I quite like it so I think I'll probably try that in another pair of socks in the future. My second finished object is one that hasn't been seen before and that is my cognac sweater. This is a test knit that I'm doing for Marin of Atelier Castan and it was so much fun to knit. It absolutely flew off the needles. I have so many good memories um, of knitting this when I was spending time with my family and on our little road trip around Ireland. So it holds a lot of special memories and it was such an enjoyable knit as well. So I knit this sweater in these two yarns held together. This is the Woolen Works uh, Fingering Merino yarn in the colour Fur Coat from her Barbie collection. And I held it with a strand of Father Spates Cumulus in this beige colour. Whilst I do love the colour of the main yarn, the fur coat, I did think the undertones were a little bit too yellow to go against my skin and my hair. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about having it in a whole sweater, so I did decide to pair it with a little bit more of a beige uh, second strand just to mull the colours a little bit and tone down the yellowness of it. And I'm really happy with how the finished fabric turned out. It has a little bit more of a pinkish colour to it rather than the yellowness that came from the fur coat but I think you can still see how the colour was intended to be. It still looks like the original fur coat in the Barbie movie and I think you get you can still see all of the beautiful speckles and the colour variation of the main yarn so I don't think it detracted from it at all but I think the overall colour combination suits me a little bit better. So here's the sweater on. I finished this very quickly. The actual knitting only took about two weeks and I waited to come home so I could block it before doing all of the final bind offs and everything. I'll stand up and show off the length as well. The bind off on the body is a little bit tight. I blocked it before doing the final bind off just to check that I was happy with the length and it does cinch in a little bit I think if I just re-block it, I can um, make sure that it's a little bit more straight. It doesn't bother me at all. It's still really comfortable to wear. So I think I'll just leave it for now until I need to wash it again. The sleeves are also quite long. If I have them pulled down, they do go past my hands. So I, yeah, no, I need to decide whether I want to go back and shorten them a little bit. I have made the lento in a strand of Suri with a strand of superwash merino and I have found that over time the fabric in the sleeves does like crease up a little bit and the sleeves have ridden up quite a lot. When I do block it I can stretch it back out again but I'm thinking I might just wear this um, a few times and just see if I want to rip back the sleeves or if I'll be happy with how they are. I can always like cuff up the ribbing if I want to but it is a shame because is twisted rib and then when they're cuffed you don't see the twisted rib so I think I will wear it a few times and see how I go did before ripping back the sleeves. It obviously doesn't take very long because uh, it's a pretty small circumference at the end of the sleeves and also the gauge is very loose. I'll quickly show off the beautiful shoulder construction because that is the main attraction of this sweater. So it is a really nice contiguous shoulder like a set in sleeve construction. And then there's a really nice tapered sleeve as well. The yarn is what pulls this sweater together for me. I love how the speckles look. The color variation is really subtle, but in a bigger piece like this, you can see exactly how Woolen Works has dyed it and the intention behind the yarn. So yes, as you can tell, I'm quite pleased with how this project has turned out. I need to take it off though because it's getting really hot in here. As I mentioned, this is a really quick knit because it's at such a loose gauge. It's knit at a 16 stitch gauge, which creates this really nice open and flowy fabric, which is perfect for the climate that I live in. It's quite similar to the Lento sweater and I get so much wear out of my Lento. So I was really excited to have something a bit similar, but a different construction in my wardrobe. I have to say, I think I prefer the construction of this one and the way that it fits on me. 
The lento is really fun. It's just a raglan construction. So if that is something that you prefer, I think go with that one. For me, I find the shoulder construction of this so engaging that I don't want to put it down. I find raglans get a little bit boring to be honest and quite arduous towards the end when you feel like you have so many stitches on your needles and you're just doing the same thing over and over again. There's more purling in the construction of this sweater because of the way that you shape the neckline with short rows. I definitely think it's worth it though and it's not too bad because this is such a loose gauge. Uh, it goes by very quickly so it doesn't feel like it's taking forever. The pattern also has multiple options for all the finishing. I decided to go with the twisted rib for this version. So the collar and the sleeves and the hem all have twisted rib. The second option was also to do an eye cord, which I really like the look of. I think I'll make a second version with an eye cord finishing as well. But for this one, I decided to go with the twisted rib. As you can see, there's not mountains and mountains of twisted rib on the body or on the sleeves. So if that's something that does put you off from wanting to try twisted rib or you don't like having to do endless rows of it, this one does go by quite quickly. The only thing is the sleeves. I think I'll wear it a few times before I decide to go back and shorten them. I think all I need to do is take out one of the decreases, which would be about here. Uh, but that is quite a bit of knitting. So I think I'll wear them first and see if they rise up during the day when I'm wearing it before I commit to ripping it out. I know it won't take me very long, but I'd rather just be sure that that's the right decision before I jump into it. I mentioned before I really don't mind having long sleeves on my sweaters. I have quite long arms, so ready to wear sweaters are always too short, and I really like having my hands covered by sweaters anyway. So I think I'll leave it for now, and when it gets a bit cooler, I'll start wearing it and make a decision after that. I'm not sure when this pattern will be released. We have until middle of February, I think, is a deadline for finishing the test. So I assume it will be sometime towards the end of February or beginning of March. So if this is something that catches your eye, I would definitely keep an eye out for the pattern release. It's such an enjoyable knit and such a wearable piece, especially if you live in a warmer climate where you don't necessarily need a lot of chunkier sweaters to get you through the winter. I definitely see myself making more of these in different yarn combinations and I'm really excited to get some wear of this over winter. One final thing I wanted to mention on my cognac sweater is that because I used hand dyed yarn I did alternate skeins throughout the project. I'm not sure if I necessarily had to. The skeins were very very evenly dyed but I didn't want to take a risk on any colour pooling. You can even see on the back that the speckles are really really even. I don't think there's any obvious colour pooling. It was a little bit to juggle, especially when I was working the sleeves in Magic Loop and I had four skeins coming off it at the same time. For example, I was in the car trying to knit this. It did get a little bit tricky and I was trying to juggle all the balls without them getting tangled up, but I'm glad I did. I think it's always worth putting in a little bit of extra effort just to make sure that I'm happy with the result. Keeping on the theme of Atelier Kassan designs, my next work in progress is a sea salt tee. I am knitting this in some beautiful pink cotton cashmere yarn. It is the Katia cotton cashmere yarn. There's only 10% cashmere in there, so it's not super luxurious, but I can definitely feel it in there. The two different fibers have also picked up the dye differently, so it gives a really interesting color variation. It's definitely not a variegated yarn but I think you can really see that it adds a little bit of depth into the color. I am knitting this again on smaller needles than recommended in the pattern. Recommended is 3.5 millimeter needles and I've gone down to a three millimeter. I really liked how the fabric felt on this size needle, so I just went for it. The first version that I made, I went down to a 2.75 millimeter needle, but I used a different yarn that was slightly thinner, so I preferred how the gauge looked and felt on that one. So because I think I'm working a little bit slightly above gauge, I have made the first size in the pattern uh, rather than the second size. This was my aeroplane knitting, so I did go and purchase some wooden Knit Pro needles just for this project. It was a different sensory experience, I have to admit. I'm a metal needle kind of girl, so I don't love using wooden needles mainly because I'm terrified of snapping them. I even bought two sets of 
needle tips to take with me just in case something happened to the first set if I sat on them or they somehow broke in my bag but I was very particular about making sure to um, take the tips off when I put it back in my project bag just to make sure that they could sit flat in the packaging. I don't know if that was completely necessary. I've heard that it's quite hard to break them accidentally, but I really didn't want that to happen. And I'm pleased to report that they came back in one piece. So, so far, so good. I think because I started doing this on wooden needles, I'll just knit the whole project on the same needles just in case it affects my gauge in some way. Speaking of gauge, I think my gauge is a little bit bigger than the recommended in the pattern. So because of that, I have gone down to the first size in the pattern. The first version I made, I knit the second size and went down to a 2.75 millimeter needle to get gauge. Because I was test knitting for that one, I did want to make sure I was working on gauge properly and put a little bit of extra effort into making sure I was. I also think the cotton cashmere might grow a little bit more, so I wanted to err on the side of caution and just went down to the first size. And I'm glad I did, it's fitting me really well. I managed to get quite a lot of knitting done just on the aeroplane. I did most of the yoke, which was quite impressive because there is a quite a bit of purling. As I mentioned in the cognac sweater, this is pretty much the same construction but at a much tighter gauge and just as a t-shirt instead of a full sweater. There's also different finishing um, than on the sweater. This one does all the finishes as fold over hems or edges like I've done on the collar. So here's the shoulder so far. I'm really loving how it's looking and how it's fitting. It's a bit of a um, looser fit, I think, than my first one, which does show me that I'm probably way above gauge. I haven't blocked this yet, but I'm hoping it won't grow too, too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how it's fitting so far. The only thing is this collar. It's much wider than the first one I made. As you can see, my t-shirt sticks out quite a lot. So I have a few thoughts on what I can do. It's also sticking out quite badly. As I said, it's not blocked, but as you can see even in the back, it's really not flat at all. And I'm not super happy with how it looks. I did do a good job on the pickup though, if I have to say so myself. So the collar is knit on smaller needles. Because I knit the main body on a three, I went down to a 2.5 for the collar and did the recommended pickup, but I think I might have to go down to a 2.25 for the neckband and potentially pick up fewer stitches as well. I think I also knit this a little bit longer than recommended in the pattern, so that probably doesn't help either. So I'm kind of thinking my gut is telling me to just rip it back and do it again. It honestly didn't take that long. The longest part is probably knitting it back down to the beginning. So I think to be completely happy with it, I'll rip it out, go down a needle size, and just probably try picking up the same number of stitches to start off with. Maybe knit it a tiny bit shorter. I did the recommended number of rows, but I think I'll take out a few. I think if I just use a smaller needle size, that will hopefully also bring the neckline in slightly more. I like how it looks at the moment. It's just a little bit wider than I was expecting. I think I just want it to be slightly more snug, especially once I block it. I have a feeling this fabric will open up a little bit. My swatch didn't change too much when I blocked it, so I'm thinking that it won't be too bad, but with uh, the weight of a full t-shirt at the bottom of this and a little bit more on the sleeves, I think it will open up a little bit more. So I think I do just need to rip it back and knit it again, which is fine. It didn't take too long. It's just a little bit annoying when you've already knit this and you have to go back and do it again. So as you can see, I'm just working on the body now. I've got a few rounds in. I'll probably keep going on the body. It's some really nice, simple stockinette until the end and finish it off with a nice folded hem. Go back and add a few rows to the sleeves. They're already fairly long, as you can see, just from doing the shoulder construction. So I think from memory, you only do a few rounds. You pick up, obviously, the stitches that you cast on in the underarm like a normal sleeve and then knit a few rounds and also do the folded cuff. For me it's a fairly speedy knit, not as quick as the cognac sweater but because this is knit on a plant fibre and on smaller needles it is taking me a little bit longer which is fine. I'm really enjoying knitting this hence why this is actually the third one that I'm making. The second one I made for my mom and she really likes that so she's already requested another one. I said if she likes the feel of this yarn I would probably make her another one in the cotton cashmere. I think it would be a really nice summer yarn and 
something that I get a lot of wear out of. I also really like how the color's looking on me. I think when I said when I bought the yarn initially, I wasn't sure if I would like the color, but I think it looks really nice. I think with some denim jeans like this or some black work trousers, it will look really nice. So again, another one that I'm really enjoying knitting and really excited to wear as a finished piece. I think it will hopefully be done in the next couple of weeks. As I said, the yoke is what takes me the longest with the purling to shape the neckline, but it's always worth it when you get to see how nice and curved the neckline is. My next work in progress is also a new one to the podcast, and you'll have to excuse all the ends and how messy this looks at the moment, but we are making another 9pm tank by Tiff Knit. This is also the second time I've knit this pattern. The first one I knit last year um, around the same time, and I get so much wear out of it. I really enjoy the fit of it. The construction is also really fun, so I was looking forward to making a second version. I've knit both of them in the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino, and this one is knit in the colour Strawberry Ice Cream. Again, we're on theme with the pinks for summer. I think it's a really fun colour and it's something a little bit different for me, but I think it's a vibrant enough pink that it won't clash with my skin tone. Previously, I've had to buy the cotton merino from Knitting for Olive from their website, but very excitingly, my locally owned store, Calico and Ivy, have started stocking this yarn in their Knitting for Olive collection. So as you can see, I have knit one strap and I'm just working on the second one now. I didn't take this away with me, so it's been on hold for a little while and I just picked up for the second strap this morning and I've made quite a good progress um, on the body as well. I surprised myself when I picked it up this morning that I had worked so much of it. In the pattern, the designer does recommend to stop and put the body on hold and then knit the straps so you can determine exactly the length of the body, which is exactly what I've done here. The straps do look quite short, but when I tried it on, it does fit me really well. I don't like having these um, square necks too low. They just look a little bit funny on me like that. So I have made it fairly short. I also know from my previous version that they'll grow out quite a bit with blocking and wearing. So I wanted to make sure that I was happy with the length of it and I wouldn't have to go back and add in elastic or shorten them like I've had to do on my first version. I've just put it on over this t-shirt and you can see that the length of the strap is quite good actually. The armhole is a little bit too high for comfort now, but I think when it's blocked it will drop down a little bit and yes, it will be a good length as well. I don't think I'm too far off from finishing the body as well. As you can see, there's a nice way shaping on the side. I think when I've done the second strap, I will give it a mid-project block just to see how we're traveling on the length and potentially just finish it off where it is. It does also have a folded over hem as the finishing on the bottom, which I think looks really nice for summer knits and especially in plant fibers like this one. Now that I've got it on, I'm a bit more motivated to start finishing it. The double knitting for the straps is a little bit arduous and a little bit time consuming, but these ones are quite short, so it shouldn't take me too long. I can probably finish that in the evening. I'm really excited to have a, another one of these tanks in a brighter color. The first one is in a really nice brown color. I think it's the color called Mole from Knitting for Olive. So I'm looking forward to having something a little bit brighter and more fun for the summer as well. I have one final work in progress to share and that is a pair of socks. And these are the Somerset socks from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. I am knitting this in Manastel Uruguay Feliz yarn in this really nice it's more of a tonal grey. I was quite surprised. I'm not sure if this is hand dyed. I thought the Manos yarn was a bit more of a commercial dye, so I was surprised to see that there's colour variation. I could be completely wrong. I honestly haven't done much research into the brand, so I think I'll have a look into that and see if this is intentional, if it's part of their dyeing process, or if it's more like a hand dyed tonal where this is a bit more inevitable and a bit harder to get an even colour. But besides, I think it looks really nice in the pattern of the sock. I think this was part of my plans in the last episode. I had cast them on. I cast them on just before our trip and was working on them 
whilst I was in the county of Somerset in England, so that was really fun. Honestly, that's the main reason why I wanted to knit these socks. There are a few new techniques in this pattern for me. I don't often knit top socks, so it's always a little bit different to get started and I have to remember how to do the cast on for the toe and the increases and everything, but once I was started, it was fairly simple. There's also an Estonian braid at the top of the toe here, which I haven't knit before. It goes all the way around on the foot. I think it looks quite nice, especially with the motif here at the bottom. And then you just start doing the repeat motif as well. There's also some kind of weird heel construction. It just felt a bit wrong when I was knitting it and I don't know if I like how it looks. When the sock's on, it honestly fits okay, but it wasn't very enjoyable to knit and I don't really like how it looks. I'm really not familiar with heel constructions for toe-up socks, so if this has a name, let me know, but yeah, I'm not sure if I'll do that again. I haven't done enough toe-up socks to be confident enough to add my own heel construction into a sock unless it was an afterthought heel, but it was fun to try something different and not too far off from finishing this first sock. I think I have one more repeat before I can do the ribbing on the cuff and then we'll have one sock done. The gauge of these socks is quite tight. I'm knitting them on 2.25 millimeter needles with more of a sport weight yarn. The Feliz is 320 meters per 100 grams and it's 70% superwash merino and 30% modal instead of nylon in it. So it's been quite interesting to try something a little bit different. So far I'm liking how it's feeling. There's not really any signs of pilling so far, which is impressive considering it's been shoved in a project bag and walked around with me everywhere for a couple of weeks. I really like how the garter stitch frames the motif. I think it's a really effective design. I'm not in any hurry to finish these ones. It was just a fun project to be working on whilst I was away. And because I'm so close to finishing the first sock, I think it will be nice when I'm ready to come back to these that I won't have too far left on the first sock and then that will motivate me to finish it and get going with the second one. So that wraps up all of my works in progress. I'll quickly share some of the acquisitions that I picked up whilst I was in Ireland and some of the plans that I have to go along with them. The first stop I made was in Dublin to the shop called This Is Knit, which is a beautiful yarn store in quite close to the city centre. So if you're ever in Dublin, you should definitely go and check it out. It was really hard not to buy too much whilst I was there because it was the first stop I didn't want to spend all of my budget or take up all the extra room in my bag on the first shop but I'm quite glad I got what I did because this is where I picked up most of my acquisitions. The first thing I picked up at This Is Knit are these two skeins of Downy yarn from Studio Donegal in this lovely grey uh, heathered tweed colour. I thought the grey was a safe choice. I was debating a uh, green colour, like a really dark green since I was in Ireland, I thought it would be a fun colour choice, but I wasn't sure how well that would fit into my wardrobe and I didn't want to get a special yarn and then knit a project that I wasn't going to wear. So I thought this grey was a safe choice. I don't have too many grey sweaters, but this one also has some really interesting depth of colour. It has some beige, blue and black tweedy bits in there, so it's not just the plain flat grey. So this yarn is 410 meters per 100 grams and is 100% lamb's wool, so it's really, really soft. It doesn't feel like a really smooth superwash yarn. I've been mentioning that I want to try more non-superwash yarns, which can be a little bit harder to access for me here in Australia. So I was really looking forward to trying something that felt really soft. It's not at all scratchy on my chest, which can be quite sensitive. And yeah, I'm looking forward to swatching this one and potentially making a sweater from it. My plan for these two skeins is to knit either another Lento or another Cognac sweater. I knew that I could get a sweater's quantity out of just two skeins of fingering weight, but I wasn't sure if I would like the fabric well enough if I was just to hold this by itself. I figure this will bloom quite nicely. I'm not sure if it will be enough to like the fabric with a six or five millimeter needle. So because of that, I did pick up a few balls of this Camarose Midnight Sole. This is a baby alpaca tensile and merinold blend. So it's not like a typical silk mohair or silk and suri alpaca blend. 
It's quite matte. I've used this yarn before in a dress, so I know that I'm not sensitive to it at all and it's quite soft. Because it's quite matte, I thought it wouldn't detract from how nice and rusticy this yarn looks. I didn't want to um, take away from the look of the yarn, so I was quite cautious on picking a second strand that would complement the yarn really nicely. I'm not sure if you can see, but to me the cumulus does look a little bit more shiny and fluffy compared to the Camarose yarn. I think this looks a little bit more matte and a little bit more appropriate for the uh, Dawny yarn. So this yarn is 200 meters per 25 grams, so I only picked up three of them. In hindsight, I probably should have picked up a fourth just to have that extra bit of leeway, but I will try and pull out a whole sweater with just three of these and two of these skeins. I'm really looking forward to being able to swatch these ones and figuring out my plan for it. As I said with the cognac sweater, it also has an option for the I-cord finishes, so I'm thinking that might help save a little bit of yarn as well. I know an I-cord can use up more yarn than you expect it to, but I thought it would be less than doing all of the rib finishes. Whilst I was in This Is Knit, I also picked up this skein from Earth Yarns. It is their Weeping Willow colour and their Spiral Grain Sport Base, which is 100% superwash extra fine merino. It is 180 metres per 50 grams. So I bought this mini skein because I really like the colours and there's no other reason. I was thinking originally that I would just purchase mini skeins to make a sweet shop blanket with. Uh, this is the only mini skein that I could find that I liked the look of, so I am excited to have at least one skein to put into a blanket eventually. Of course, I have plenty of scraps and other minis that I've picked up over the years that I can include in a blanket, so it was nice to have really special skein that I can get started with. So moving on from Dublin, our next stop was in Cork and whilst we were driving to the city, we did stop at Hedgehog Fibres and unfortunately it was just after their winter sale so they didn't have a huge amount in stock but that didn't stop me from doing shopping and it was really lovely to be in there and have a chat with them. They're really lovely, it was a nicely laid out section of the store where you could purchase any yarn and I did pick up a few things. So the first thing was this twist sock in the color Ghost. This yarn is 80% blue face Leicester and 20% nylon. It has a higher twist than their regular sock base, I think they were saying, so it makes it a little bit more hard wearing. It looks like a very even dye. It doesn't look too tonal at all. Obviously it still has the label on it and I haven't caked it up yet, but I'm quite impressed with how even the coloring is. My plan for this skein is to knit a pair of socks, probably a lacy pair of socks I think would look really nice in this purple colour. I haven't picked out a pattern or anything yet, I haven't really started looking, but I'm just excited to have this in my stash and when I'm ready to cast on another pair of socks, I will have a look through probably the 52 weeks of socks book first and if I don't find anything in there, I'll have a look on Instagram and Ravelry. My second purchase from Hedgehog Fibres was this beautiful skein of the Merino Lace yarn. It is just a potluck colorway. This one is 1,200 meters per 100 grams, so it is enough to make a sweater and I was really drawn to the beautiful colors in this one. Whilst I was there, they were saying that someone on Instagram had a good tip that you could have a skein of this and hold it with another sweater's quantity of yarn in your stash to make a really interesting fabric and you have enough to make a whole sweater here with 1,200 meters. So that's my plan for this one. I don't have anything in stash currently that is enough to make a sweater. I don't usually just have sweaters quantity in my stash with no plan, so I will have to buy something and at least that way I can choose a color out of here or have something that I think would go quite nicely with this. Again, I don't have a pattern in mind exactly for this yet or any other yarn or something that I have an idea for, but it's a vague idea that I'm looking forward to swatching for and looking at patterns. I'm thinking a plain drop shoulder or saddle shoulder design, maybe a raglan. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit off raglans at the moment. They're not really my favorite to make or to wear, so probably just a plain drop shoulder or something with this would look really nice. One final purchase when I was in Galway, they have a lot of knitting shops, but they're mainly just tourist shops that have ready to wear sweaters in them that they say are made from Irish wool. I'm not sure how true that is, whether 
it's spun there or actually knit there or I don't believe a lot of it. They were very, very inexpensive for being 100% wool. So I have a feeling that it was just a bit of a marketing thing. I did pick up a skein of Studio Donegal from a smaller shop in their soft Donegal base. This is 100% merino wool. I don't think it's super washed, it doesn't feel super washed, and it does say to hand wash this one as well. But again, I really love the subtle tweed colour that it is. This one has some lighter blue specks and also some yellow in there on a really nice cream base. I think this is a more of a DK yarn. This is 190 meters per 100 grams. So my plan for this one is to make it into a colorwork sweater most likely. Again, I'm not sure on the pattern exactly. Maybe the curve sweater, I'm not convinced on that one yet. I also saw that Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl has released another free pattern for a colorwork circular yoke called the Nova Sweater that I'm quite tempted by. I do really like how that one looks and one skein will be enough for the contrast color. Again, once I'm ready to cast on another sweater, I'll have a look a bit more closely and obviously I need to pick up a main color to go with this one. So I think I'll go to my local yarn store and try and find something that I think would go well with this. Because it's again not a really soft, smooth, super washed merino yarn, I think I want to find a main yarn that would pair nicely and complement this rather than going for a really smooth, super fine merino or a super washed merino that would look a bit funny paired with this one. Again, I don't find this scratchy at all. It's just a bit more rough than the yarns that I'm used to, but I'm really excited to knit with something a bit different. I think this will lend itself really well to color work. So if you have used this one before, maybe with a different yarn, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what could pair well to make a sweater out of this. So that wraps up everything that I have to share in today's podcast episode. Thank you for watching to the end. I hope that you enjoyed listening to everything I have to share. If you have any ideas on what I can make with any of my acquisitions, any patterns or other yarns that you can recommend, I'd love to hear your thoughts. There are no real set plans for them yet, so I'm yeah interested to hear if anyone has any good ideas. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!